Welcome back. This is Laura Miller again coming to you live for Sheen Talk Live. This is the second interview of the day. We have an amazing set list today. So, hey there, Certified Pio. How is everybody doing today? I am going to go ahead and put who we're meeting with today on our broadcast so you guys know what's going on. Hey, everybody. Let me pin this really quickly. Give me just a second. Comment pin. We're ready to roll. Everybody, let me know how you're doing in the comments. Is everybody safe? Is everybody well? How you doing? How you feeling? Good to hear. Hey there, Shea Boutique. Everybody, can you hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. That is very important because we don't want you guys to miss any of the content that we have coming up. So just let me know if you can hear me in the comments. Sound is good. Oh, yes, cabin fever is real. So, um, yeah, that's serious. Hold on. We got some requests to go live. Thank you. So, um, for all you natural girls out there, as the lives continue to progress today, you'll notice that my hair is going to get more and more frizzier by the minute. Okay? So, just... Uh, Stick with it. Go back to the first slide when I talk to Sierra Gates and you'll see how it looked initially. But again, frizz. It's a thing. Hey there. Hey there, rap music. How's everybody doing? You guys look good. You guys feel good. I know cabin fever is a real thing. I know somebody asked about that. Um, we did have a request for someone to go live, but it's not our guest for today. So... That's okay. They're going to come in shortly and we are going to look out. Thank you, Kristen. We are going to look out for them and um, they should be here soon. So are any of you guys that are here sports fans? Are any of you dancers? Because luckily, if you support either or, you are going to get a treat today. I see that our guest has arrived. So Mr. Bush, if you can go ahead and request... I'm going to bring you in. Okay, he's coming in, guys. Get excited, because I'm excited. <gasps> Hello, Hi. lovely people. How you Hi. doing? I'm great. How are you? We're good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank so, you for having us. No problem. It is our pleasure. Thank you for joining Team Talk Live. So before we get started, I wanted to give you guys your flowers live. I didn't want to introduce you until you showed up because I feel like everybody needs an uplift. So I wanted to geek you guys up really quick. All right. I took notes just so you guys know. <laughs> you guys are the winning couple. I'm going to call y'all. Y'all new nickname is the winning team because <laughs> judging by these stats, clearly. So Reggie Bush was the second round draft pick in 2006. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the meantime, while those things were happening, his wife, Lilith, was also winning national championships in dance. She was. Then Reggie Bush became a Super Bowl champion. Yes. He is the most exciting football player of USC history. Okay. They have beautiful children. They are fit. They are fabulous. And they are here with us today. Yeah. Let's love on them because I am excited. Thank you. Thank you we, for having us. We currently lock them in a room so we can be here with you. I was going to ask you <laughs> because my children are also locked up in a Baby room right now. Room. <laughs> yeah, for real. Our kids, man, they, you know, every day they wake up with a ton of energy. So we wake up, um, you know, trying to find different ways to entertain them. Homeschooling is, is, is uh, new for us, but <laughs> we're figuring it out. We're we making it work. Um, and yeah. I think we're doing a pretty good job so far. Um, you know, everybody's just trying to figure it out right now. You know what I mean? So um, none of us are, are uh, teachers by trade. At least I'm not. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we, we, we do appreciate this time, though, you know, with our kids. For sure. For sure. So as a parent, yes. Um, how have you guys been holding up in quarantine with everybody in the same house on the room? <laughs> how are you doing? Oh, yeah. um, I think we're, we're doing okay. You know, it's 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 mentally harder than physically mm -hmm. um, because you get 
all day nurturing and giving all day long and it's mama mama daddy daddy all yeah. day long towards the end of the day you feel like you drain you know yeah. emotionally mm -hmm. drained uh, because you your cup is not full anymore whatever you had in there you gave it away so um <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have almost nothing left for each other at night but um we're trying to set some guidelines like, you know, in the mornings at least that, um, you know, kids can't just barge into mommy, daddy's room. So that <laughs> at least for that, like when we wake up for that, like first 10 minutes, we can have, you know, time yeah, to ourselves. prepare ourselves mentally and physically together, get on the same page that we're a team. We can tackle this day. <laughs> exactly. We're <laughs> not going to win. <laughs> Um, so just setting like small little guidelines like that so that we can um, create a little bit of personal space for mommy, daddy, so that we can be the best selves that we can be for them. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. So we're, we're learning. We're yeah. learning as yeah, we go. Yeah, we're learning like everybody else. Yeah. yeah, I agree. My husband and I have like reached another level of teamwork at this point. Yeah. Like I didn't even know we could be more bonded than we already are. But it's like, oh my God, like how are we supposed to keep up with these things and we're yeah. and quarantine and pandemic life mm -hmm. and children and it's the mm -hmm. whole thing yeah. so that is awesome and i think so, you know what i think that's so important too you know because um this can be a time period where i feel like we've grown uh as teammates as well yeah. um just in, just in this you know this amount of time we've been quarantined we've learned how to get through some things and get over some things and and uh, that's helped us a lot you know that's helped us with our chemistry um, it's helped us with our kids. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, obviously, when everything starts to get back to normal, we're going to be, I think a lot of the parents are going to be better off, you know, for having gone through this mm -hmm. and having, you know, made it through um, and, you know, learned a couple of things about themselves. For sure. So hopefully you guys are planning on giving giant care packages to the teachers next year. When the school starts oh, yeah. Back. We appreciate them now. <laughs> I already started saving. Like, I usually normally gave out, like, Starbucks gift cards because I figured they needed caffeine. But I'm like, I don't know what I got to give them now. Yeah. But next year, Teacher they get Teacher Appreciation it. Day is going to be on another level. Yeah, yeah it's going to be yeah. another level, for sure. Yeah. And so I would like to personally, if you guys don't mind sharing, kind of get an idea of your love story. Because it's like, mm -hmm. where do fantastic people like you guys meet? Like, how does that even happen? <laughs> uh, you know, is the story um, is... It is pretty cool. Just I think, and the I think the fact that we even met is kind of crazy. Just because she's born and raised uh, thousands of miles away from you know from where I was born and raised. She was born and raised in Armenia. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born and raised in San Diego, California, and Los Angeles. Um, and so you know, for us to be able to come together from so many different from so far, you know, from different parts of the world, um, it, it's it has to be an act of God, you know, mm -hmm. because um, you know. I always, uh, you know, knew and felt that, you know, my wife uh, was going to be, you know, from a different part of the world. Like, I just mm -hmm. knew that. I didn't know where. I didn't know who, how, but I knew she was going to be from a different part of the world. And, um, you know, that was just an intuition that I felt inside. And then when we met, um, the story of how we met is actually we, we saw each other at an award show. Um, mm -hmm. And we didn't talk and we didn't uh, say anything to each other. Um, and we left the award show, we were leaving. She doesn't, she knows it now, but at the time she didn't know. I actually was chasing her down to try to, 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 to catch up with her, to get Dang. her phone number. And it was crazy because it really wasn't, you know, it didn't feel like that long. It felt like 20 seconds or 30 mm -hmm. seconds or whatever it was. And um, I saw her walking out of the, the hotel door, walking towards it. And it was kind of this group area where everybody was kind of hanging out. And I spoke to somebody for like 10 seconds, turned my attention to go over there and she was already gone. Oh. And so a year later, uh, a friend, a mutual friend of ours uh, brings up her name. We're at a nightclub, me and some of my boys and brings up her name. And so I say to the guys, like, yo, whatever happened to her? Like, can you hook me up? And he was like, yo, yeah, 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 I got you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna hook you up. I got you. I was like, all right, cool. You know, so I gave him my number. And she did, she did text, you know, I was surprised. I was shocked. She did. I did it for a while. She didn't for a while. Though. It wasn't right away. <laughs> you thought about me. it. You had to, you had to make her sweat a little bit. <laughs> she made me wait. She made me wait. And uh, then when we text and we finally started hanging out, um, we just vibed and we just got along. And, um, you know, it was, even though there was still a little bit of a language barrier, cause she mm -hmm. had a really, really thick accent back then. <laughs> But it's gotten a lot better 
over over time and now she speaks i mean obviously great in multiple languages which i'm just so proud of because our kids get a chance to learn multiple languages you know they're learning how to speak armenian and russian and um uh, spanish all nice. at once in english i'm the only one that got english. English to our kids. <laughs> oh yeah dad so, you're not gonna know half of what's going on nah. in the house for a long time <laughs> so so yeah so that's how we met uh, oh no wait did i get to the part where we met yeah. no so a year later yeah. yeah, okay. I did, I did. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, did, I got to it. So, yeah, that's how we met. Yeah, we were, we were I think, the night of the awards show, we, there was, like, a party we were both going to be at. But mm -hmm. um, on the way home, when I was going home to change for the party, I almost ran over um, – a bike rider, a bicycle rider, and it was, it was, you know, it was an accident, but nothing happened. Nobody was harmed. But then I was in a terrible mood, so I didn't end up going, and we never ended up meeting. Mm -hmm. But maybe it wasn't the right time, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I do believe that you have to put a lot of your trust, if not all, into God's timing. Yeah. And um, it wasn't meant to be for us to meet and start talking at that time because maybe neither one of us was at the right place for yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. And had we met that night and talked, maybe something wasn't going to work out, mm -hmm. you know? So I do believe that you have to trust in God's timing um, whenever you are waiting for that special person for you. Um, you have to pray for them, you know, pray for them into existence and just wait and they will, God will bring them into your life. Yeah. That's nice. I like that. So, Lilith, dance lady. <laughs> yeah. You were choreo uh, choreographer for Dancing with the Stars. Is that true? Uh, I did. I choreographed uh, with certain members of them for their, um, for um, a certain members with, from Dancing with the Stars for uh, La Rev. Um, they, do you know the show in at the Wynn in Las yeah. Vegas? La Rev. Mm -hmm. La Rev. Yeah. So, um, couple of us from the show, uh, me and a couple of people from the show, we all together choreographed a number for them. That was uh, many years ago. That was mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. And then um, yeah. I did, a, I didn't choreograph, but I did their residential show in Vegas. Um, that's when we were, we just we kind just of started, started dating. dating. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was in Vegas for a few months. It was... It was tough. We, yeah, bad. You know, because we had to, we had to live on the strip. So we... We lived right. on, on the strip on Las Vegas and danced there. So it was not, it was, you know, it was very glamorous when I just got hired being there every day. But then after, after like a month, it was like, wow, this is tough <laughs> being here with all this going on every day and performing. So that was, it was, it was an amazing experience and everybody on the show was so wonderful. And I would fly in to, to see her, you know, from whenever I had time <laughs> off, I would fly in to see her and visit and um you know that was like our first when we were first started dating that was the first like memories of us dating mm -hmm. that going is so magical <laughs> it comes to me perform i would go see her i perform. think the very yeah. first not the very first the second show he saw me perform my skirt <laughs> fell off on stage <laughs> and you kept dancing i had a, I had a dress color <laughs> Ah. And my skirt was too loose. And when I was doing one of the shimmy moves, and it just kept lowering and lowering and lowering. <laughs> <laughs> my booty was out. That's insane. So I think that's when he really fell in love. <laughs> that was it because you played. You you ran through the tape. You played right. You played off that. It was okay. You kept going. That's yeah. what it is. That worked. So, oh, as far as um, with you guys being a winning team, you guys are accustomed to being brilliant and champions and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. How do you think that awareness has shaped your parenting style? The the I'm right, one more time. Uh, oh, um, the awareness of what? One more time. Being a champion, just being the winner, mm -hmm. like being on the winning mm -hmm. team. How does that shape you guys as parents? <laughs> well, I, you know what? Um, as far as the winning team title, we appreciate that. Uh, winning we, team as as as, as like, a couple. As a couple, oh. yeah. Oh, I see. So we appreciate the title. And, um, you know, we honestly don't view ourselves any differently than anybody else. You know, we we're, we wake up with a, with the same, you know, hunger to go and be successful. Uh, with We, you know, we approach, you know, every day um, just with, you know, passion and, you know, dedication to achieve certain goals, right? Mm -hmm. like we don't try to achieve everything in one day. You know, we try to make sure that we um, set little goals for ourselves each day. And, you know, that one thing that I found out is that it's very helpful. Um, just setting that goal, you know, for the day, what is it I want to accomplish? And then, 
you know, what are the goals for the week, for the month, what's, you know, you know, years out, you know, so we have things that, um, you know, we set up for ourselves. And, and, and again, we struggle with this too, you know, just like everybody else. We have our times where we kind of regress and, uh, you know, you know, maybe Netflix and chill all night, you know what I mean? Or, you know, sometimes where, you know, we go on days where, you know, we don't, you know, stick to our schedule, or whatever it is. So, um, again, I don't want us to sit up here and act like we got it made because we don't. You know, we have been through our fair share of ups and downs, you know, in our lives, um, in our marriage, you know, even with our kids and, and things that, you know, we all uh, see as ways for us to grow. You know, I think it's not about what happens to you, but it's how you respond to it. Absolutely. Right? And, and so that's anything in life. You know what I mean? So that to me, though, the, 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 the real value is in, you know, what I learned from the sport that I played in growing up, you know, things like discipline and things like, you know, teamwork and accountability and, you know, being on time and all those things. And the same things that she learned, you know, in dancing, um, you know, she was, you know, one of the best and I'm not just bragging about it because she right here, uh, but half of, our wall of half of our wall of trophies is her trophy. <laughs> yeah, for uh, sure. You know, so I, I just, I, I want to also, you know, I want people to also understand that, you know, we we don't got it made like that. Like we we don't we're not, we're not just every day. we're not just you know we're what I mean. Like we we, we appreciate the title because we feel like we are winning, you know, within our relationship and within ourselves. But uh, you know, we don't walk around like that. You know what I mean? And I think there's a difference, you know, when you know, with people who just kind of walk around like they got it and like they mm -hmm. have the answers to everything. Those are the people you got to run away from. Don't walk away. Run away from them. Absolutely. But you and cannot, you can't, the title of winning couple, it's, it's how you perceive it, right? Because mm -hmm. one day we're winning, one day we're losing, one day we're winning. It's to yeah. being able to recognize those ups and downs within your relationship and your parenting, um, with your relationship with your kids and being able to work through those adversities and not seeing the bad as bad because mm -hmm. whatever situation you're dealing with, if it's bad or good, you if you be able to see that as just a learning curve for you, it's just an avenue for you to grow to a new level. So yeah. we don't we don't consider winning or losing. We just whatever whenever we're we don't lose. We just learn, right? So whenever you hit yeah. something, you have to get over. It's just a, an opportunity for a growth as a couple, as as individuals, and yeah. as parents. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. One day we win, one day we lose. As long as we're moving up, we're good. Yeah, exactly. yeah, but you know what? That's a true testament. And that's why you guys get to keep the moniker because you're conscious in knowing that you're not going to win every day. Yeah, exactly. And like you guys have said, like, even just by in the early stages of your relationship having to be long distance, like, mm -hmm. a lot of people struggle with that. Like, yeah. it's a lot of things that people who seem to have it all together go through on a daily basis that a lot of people aren't aware of yeah. and it's really good that you guys are open and honest with that because i think a lot of times people are not like it's one thing to just stand and look really good at the SBs, and then nobody knows anything yeah. after that but see that's yeah. real life <laughs> all the time we had and there's this one question willa i want to address it to you i want to no, address um, oh she had to go Oh, no, 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 she's good. Just our son walked in. And, uh, so, hey there, but, cuteness. <laughs> one, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, th that's it right there, though. I think, um, you know, you kind of, you know, you kind of said it. And, you know, for us, um, you know, we, we try to approach each day just with the conscious mindset that, um, you know, we're trying to grow. And also, we're trying to help other people, too, you mm -hmm. know, because that's what we're here for. You know, we're not just here to... Um, worry about ourselves, but we're here to help somebody, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, um, you know, we've, we've, we've been able to do some of those things through some of our charitable efforts. Um, you know, every year we have a, a foundation uh, where we raise money for a 501C. We're not an actual 501C, but we raise money for one uh, mm -hmm. that benefits homeless children. So uh, nice. for me, it's something that's near and dear to my heart, just helping kids in general, because, um, you know, kids are the future. And I was once a kid, and somebody gave back to me, you know, when I was older, I mean, when I was younger. And so, you know, a couple of people actually, you know, kind of left uh, influences and impacts on my life. And it was just because of, you know, them either sharing their time with me or just meeting them or whatever it was. But 
um, it always made me want to give back, you know, because again, you know, our kids need it now more than ever, especially in this crazy time period. For sure. That's really important that you guys do that. And it's really nice, especially because you can show your children how to give back as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because that way they'll be well-rounded individuals. You don't want yeah. those pretentious children that are just used to taking, taking, taking and not giving enough. So that is super useful. Yeah. I appreciate you guys for that. And yeah, this is just a guilty pleasure question that I have for Lilith specifically. <laughs> Bring it in, sis. Let me come. <laughs> Go ahead. This is all you. So <laughs> my children, my husband and I are both excellent dancers, okay? Mm. Our children cannot dance. Our kids can't dance either yet. So. <laughs> How does that happen? What's happening with that? Um with, with the, the talent not transferring. Yeah, yeah. like, isn't it supposed to be a direct transfer? Are you supposed to have right, that? Right. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a really big believer to, to that everybody get, can dance. And mm -hmm. um, everybody's coachable in dance. You know what I mean? Whether the person has the rhythm or not, it's something that can grow in them because I've coached dance for a really long time. And I've coached people of all different ages. I coached kids, I coached adults that always wanted to dance but never believed they could because for some reason, something happened in their life that they thought that never could be them. It could have been a comment from a parent. It could have been something, you know, they danced in front of a class and they were shamed for it. And then now they have that idea in their mind that they they got two left feet and they can never dance. And then all of a sudden they're like 50 years old, finally got the courage and they come and take a class. And the first thing they tell me is I've always wanted to dance, but I really don't think I can because I don't have this. I don't have that. It's more mm -hmm. of a mentality and what you, um, what you've told yourself over really, you know, period of a long time. And I, because I was able to coach literally anybody from any level, mm -hmm. I'm a big believer that anybody can dance. It's a, it's a fear of um, more like a self-conscious, you know, you're self-conscious, you don't want, you're shy or um, something happened within your life that made you feel that way. So I think kids, um, they see, they, I, our kids kind of getting into it a little bit. Yeah, they're getting um, into it. We put them in, we they, put two of our kids in uh, dance, hip hop dance classes. They love that. They just, mm -hmm. and then really what it was is just, it was an after school program where they could just go crazy in there. You know what I mean? But yeah. the teacher was pretty good because she was good at, um, understanding like kids that age that young like yeah. seven i'm talking about like seven six or seven years old so mm -hmm. it was good because one i think i know as a young kid growing up one of my biggest fears was dancing in front of people you know what i mean and so as i grew up and got older i had friends that danced so naturally i started to learn how to dance but i know for kids like one of the biggest um you know confidence issues is dancing like it's mm -hmm. just learning how to dance you know and that could literally shift a kid's mentality so much just by teaching them how to dance. You know what I mean? That so. is true. So our kids, are, I mean, I don't think um, the genes transfer, <laughs> transfer from me. Because <laughs> they got like the baby dance, you know, all the yeah, crazy moves. It's okay. Yeah, it's long just like a bunch you, of jiggling. Like, it's I just do all think over the as place. long as you celebrate their freedom of expressing, uh, you shouldn't try to shape them into dancing a certain way yet. Allow them to be free and express their movement, their feeling. Because at this moment, the most important part is just to be so, not self-conscious, not resistant you know um con uh, what's what's the right word i i don't know the so right word but like yeah, but you insecure. don't oh, insecure, insecure you don't allow yourself to express yourself you know with movement and body movement because um the 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 way and the routine and all that will come with time you know mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. encourage them to be free and not shy and just celebrate them whatever they're doing yeah. and then with time they will learn all the other stuff the cool moves <laughs> the rhythm and all that that's stuff gonna that happen comes. naturally man yeah. yeah yeah that's gonna happen naturally i'm really thinking that you guys can, should consider co-authoring a book <laughs> we might we might oh somebody said constricted Wait, constrict. Yeah, constrict it. She got, oh, they got my phone, the word I was looking for. They got the word. Yeah, no, I really think that you guys <laughs> my should My phone has not 
there yet. My oh, no, you're doing excellent. English, you're doing great. I'm reading That's and then rushing my head, and then I have to translate it to English, and then it comes out <laughs> of my mouth. So it's, the process is a long time. Oh, you're doing great. So, Reggie? Yeah. When I was growing up, I was a tomboy, and I wanted to be a football player. Mm hmm I had a choice because I had quick feet. I ran fast. I had like mm -hmm. a six flat 50 yard dash. Like I had lightning speed. I was serious. <laughs> and I had the option in my mind that I was going to be a wide receiver because I didn't want to get hit like you. Yeah. <laughs> How did you decide that you were going to be a running back? Not only a running back, the running back. Like you were taking so many hits. That's Man. such a hard job. Like, did you just uh, so wake up and just be like, you know what, forget this. I don't want to get hit. hit. You slide nah, all the time. You slide know, now. Actually, when I, I started playing, with, I started baseball. You know, my first sport was baseball. And just very similar, my, my son, all my, my son's first sport is going to be baseball because it's a sport that you can do at a young age without contact. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so for me, I had a lot of energy as a young kid. And when I was in school, I would get in trouble a lot because I had so much energy. And my teachers uh, would often tell my mom that I should, you know, go to a doctor and see if they should prescribe me, you know, ADHD medicine or, you know, atten uh, ADD medicine, whatever it is. So they, uh, my mom, obviously being the mother she is, didn't listen to them. You know, kudos to her for that decision mm -hmm. because when she put me in football, um, that was it. And I knew this is what I wanted to do. You know, it was Ooh. like I had my first love. Um, I fell in love with the sport, the game, everything about it, the excitement. And then when I watched it on TV, it was like even more grand to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and I was watching guys like Deion Sanders, Barry Sanders, um, you know, uh, Jerry Rice, you know, all those guys. Like, these are legends to me. And now I have a relationship with some of these guys and I had a chance to get to know them. So that's I, I love that part of it. But, um, you know, for me, once I I don't know what it was about football. It just spoke to uh, my spirit and it just spoke to me. And once I once I started playing, that was it. Like my mom, my parents didn't have to tell me nothing else. They didn't have to. I was the best kid in the world because all I wanted to do was play football. You were like, I am laser focused. I have all the attention now. I knew I, I knew this was my ticket, you know, and I knew this was my way that you know I was going to be able to to you know provide a good life for my family and for myself. Mm -hmm. And it was it was I had the vision. You know, I had the, the vision and the, the dream, and now it's just about me um, locking in, you know, and I, I made it a lifelong process, you know. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons, you know, I get a chance to speak to a lot of kids, and, you know, one of the reasons that sometimes I get scared to tell them my story is because I never had a plan B or C. I only had a plan mm. A, you know, and my plan A was football, and that was it. And so I poured 120% into football every single day, you know, until, you know, my dreams started to become a reality. And uh, again, like I said, I, sometimes I'm scared to tell kids that message because I want them to also understand that, you know, for, for, for me, I thought, all, I thought all I had was football. I didn't mm -hmm. know I could be a president. I didn't right. know I could go in and be, you know, work on Wall Street. You know, I didn't know what Wall Street was. You know what I mean? So a lot of these things that are at the disposal, uh, are at the disposal of, you know, some fortunate kids, I didn't have that, you know, so mm -hmm. when I go to the inner city and I talk to these young kids, I want them to know, no, you don't have to play sports just to make it out. Like you exactly. can do other things. You know what I mean? Like you can be a doctor, you can be a this and that. You could be a, a real estate mogul, you know, a billionaire. You can be a, a, a IT, t a, a tech, you know, um, you know, investor and, and make lots of money. You can do all these different things. So, you know, that's why for me is, you know, I, I get a little, um, I think just guarded when I tell that story and you know, I kind of tell it with, you know, just, I don't know, a little bit more care, carefulness. I mean, it's true though. I mean, if you didn't have a plan B, you didn't have a plan B. It's just, right. <laughs> that's you know, and I just don't want kids to be like, man, well, listen, I want, cause everybody ain't going to play football. That's exactly. The other side. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like everybody's not going to be fortunate and blessed to play football. So. Mm -hmm. so do you miss football? Do you miss it? Uh, I do miss football. Yeah, I miss the games. The games and, and the feeling and the adrenaline and being able to be with the guys on the field. I, I don't think anybody anything matches up to that. But then last night yeah. we were talking about... Um, one of one our of games his, is on. One of his old... Yeah, one, one of our games, games is on. <laughs> we watched uh, that. That was fun. 
um, what we were talking about one of his, you know, friends and all all the surgeries that now he's going through. And yeah. I was like, I'm so I'm so happy you retired. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask you to like, Christ, are you glad he's done injuries? <laughs> Oh my God. Like I need you for the rest of your life, you know, because football is something you do. It is not who you are. So yeah. thank God that, you know, he walked away from the game all in one piece because not a lot of guys are fortunate like that. Um, not to say that he doesn't have aches yeah. and pain and things that he has to um, address. But, you know, not a lot of guys are fortunate to walk away from the game with all the limbs attached. You know what I mean? So I'm just mm -hmm. so happy that. He's he retired now. <laughs> and to be Sunday. Just <laughs> ideally for both of you to be retired at this age, right? Like you're still young. Like you guys could like literally tomorrow decide you wanted to go into medicine and do that mm -hmm. because you're young enough to do it. Like, still young enough to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, like just go do that. Like I think I'm gonna be a surgeon now. This is gonna yeah. work. You and can that's, definitely that's do that. You know, that's what's also tough too about our sport is um, you retire very young. You know, mm -hmm. no other form of work do you re I was retired at 31 years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A curse, right? Retired, you know, and was happy to be retired too. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, like, like you I felt like <laughs> you felt like the go watch should have been there. Like I'm gonna do this now. I think like, it's I a good it's a good and a bad could also be a bad thing because if you're not mentally prepared for that transition, yeah. if you've mm -hmm. given one you know, your whole self to one thing forever, but you're and you identify with that thing for so long and now it's gone and if you're not prepared for that transition it could be a hard hit for people too because yeah, now absolutely. you are young and you know all of a sudden there's one thing that you've done for the for all of your life is gone what do you do next right so so it was we're, we're happy now that he transitioned into fox sports and he yeah. knows what he does and yeah a new it's, passion it's awesome yeah we're blessed yeah so did you guys watch the draft all three days I, I watched the, I watched the draft. I didn't watch all three days. I watched the first round and that was it. And then I checked to see who got drafted where. Okay. That's the smart choice. That's yeah. I, I was like, it's three days. I'm not going to run all three I'm days. I'm not doing it. And this draft was very interesting as far as the family commentary. There was a lot going on in this draft. So it was yeah. quite entertaining. It was definitely a change of pace. Mm -hmm. So... I'd like to know what you guys have coming down the pipeline because I'm sure everybody that's on the live is completely immersed by you guys and just enamored because you're amazing people. <laughs> what do you guys have coming up next? Um, so, well, we, we have our college football show um, that this is now we're going in a year or two um, on Fox. And, you know, we had a lot of success in year one. And I'm really excited about year two because um, we have an opportunity to grow. And mm -hmm. I think we have a good, solid foundation now. And now we want to bring some flavor to the show. Uh, I want to bring some flavor to the show. I want people to tune in, even if you're not a sports athlete, I mean, a sports uh, fan. I want you to tune in just because, you know what I mean? Just because you know you're going to get some commentary or, you know, you're going to get some entertainment or, you know, you might or you might learn something, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. about the game. You know what I mean? And so we want the, 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 the wives who – um, maybe don't know the game as well. You know what I mean? We want them to tune in. We want all the ladies who don't maybe don't know the game as well because we want to educate them. We want to teach them about the game. Um, and it don't matter where you come from. It don't matter your, your, your skin color, your, your background. You know, football is, is a great sport um, and it's very entertaining, you know. So that's one of the things uh, my wife has that's been... <laughs> Yeah, she's learning too. She's learning too. Still, I'm we still. Don't, we don't have football uh, in. I mean, American football in Armenia. Nah. So I didn't grow up knowing anything about that sport at all. So yeah. I had to learn when we started dating. That's when I kind of started, ha you know, having some interest in it and had to learn. Yeah. What did you think about it initially? How did you feel about it? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Whoa, this big, really big guys running around <laughs> on the field, and bumping each other. What's <laughs> yeah, it at, looks first, violent. at first but then you know <laughs> but then I when I was watching his games and I was understanding slowly what was happening and you know cheering for someone just creates so much excitement yeah mm -hmm. and I, I learned and it's I love it I do I love the game because that's all we watch we watch sports and cartoons at home so I have to love it I don't have a choice <laughs> I, I was going to ask you, what do nah, you watch? we watch other stuff. She lying. We be watching Netflix. Uh, we watching the show right now, Black as 
F. I'm not gonna say the other word, but we love that show. Love that show hilarious. is like a carbon copy of our family. So we watched that show. Uh, we watched a couple other shows too. Um, but you know, some of the things. So, so what, she stopped dancing uh, around the time that we had our first daughter, and we made a decision that she was gonna make a career shift. And and so you know, our daughter is now about to be seven years old. Mm -hmm. And so my wife has been grinding. When I say grinding, she's been grinding um, in acting. Um, so she's been studying uh, under an acting coach named Aaron Spicer, who has a studio in LA on La Cienega Boulevard. Nice. Um, called what's it called? Spicer Sturgis. Spicer what? And Sturgis. Spicer and Sturgis. And so she's been acting, and she is um, obviously this virus slowed a lot of things down, but uh, I'm very excited for her acting career to take off because she's very talented, um, and it's just a matter of time before people get a chance to really see just how beautiful she is and how talented she is too you know so she boxes uh she um dances she acts she cooks come on it all over here man she, she made me some shrimp and grits yesterday for breakfast good thing. okay you better go shout okay you better get in yesterday. that corner and shout <laughs> you get there so <laughs> this is the other thing that i love to brag about her because um when we started dating it was when I was got just got traded to Miami, mm -hmm. and I had a chef um, that was like one of my really good friends, and he stuck with me in Miami. So for two years, when I was in Miami, uh, while I was at practice, you know, when she would come visit. Uh, by the way, I just have to say this: she would pay for her own ticket to come visit me. Um, so come on, girl. She had she already had her own stuff before me. I tried to offer; she didn't want to take it. So. She will fly herself to come see me, to come visit in Miami. And um, my chef would teach her how to cook. Uh, my chef is from New Orleans. So born and raised in New Orleans, mm. still lives there. So she was getting, you know, top A, you know, grade A uh, teaching from uh, a chef from New Orleans, who was obviously my guy, uh, Chef Gayson. And then when we went to Detroit, so we went to Detroit for two years, uh, I signed a free agency. We had a chef out there, mm -hmm. uh, John Jones, really good. And uh, so she learned from him for two years. So she learned from, from four years, four or five years, how to cook from some, some of the best chefs. And that's why she can cook so far. Now, that's why she can make shrimp and grits. And that's why she can make banana bread and all that stuff. <laughs> you are so blessed, Reggie Bush. <laughs> Because, listen, my husband will tell you, like, there are periods of time where I just get in this baking zone, Lilith, and I'm, like, <laughs> making everything from scratch, and he got so cocky about it. He was like, yeah, so you're going to churn butter next? And I'm like, no, I am not. <laughs> then it was time to work again, and they'll be happy if they get a frozen pizza out of me at this point. So. Hey, best, best of both worlds. So she's actually, she's actually teaching me how to cook. So I'm learning so a couple of things. Uh, I'm helping out you know, now more than I ever have in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, quarantine made, yeah, made quarantine. Reggie start cooking. <laughs> yeah. So I'll help out in the morning sometimes with breakfast. I'll make some of the most fire pancakes you've ever had in your no life. Yeah. Fire, fire pancakes. pancakes. 24-7. <laughs> not lying about that one. 24-7 pancakes. You can get them anytime, any time of the day. See? o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock, you know, whatever it is. Late night snack, I got you. That shows on. Those are, those are championship-worthy pancakes. Pancakes, baby. That's what we're doing. Killing it. <laughs> so we have some questions real quick. I want to check them out and see if we yeah. can get them answered for you. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, I like this question. Okay. I'm going to put it up. Would you say that fitness is as much of a passion as football was? As a former running back, I admire your, I'm assuming he says physique. Physical, Physical fitness. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I always... Uh, I can't say I've always loved working out. Um, it was something that I knew was important to my craft. Mm -hmm. And I think as I put value into that craft and, and I started putting value into my body and I started putting value into, um, you know, making sure that I was always in the best condition. Mm -hmm. and, and so what happened was it became a way of life for me. Um, it, even in the off seasons, you know, um, nobody had to tell me to work out, you know, it's just part, part of my daily routine. Um, you know, and I also, I, I still feel like working out, you know, everybody has that thing that gets them going, 
Um, mm -hmm. Working out for me is that thing that just puts my brain into a mentally sharp place of focus and discipline. And, and um, it's that thing that helps me lock in to, um, you know, whatever I got to achieve that day, you know, and I, again, like I said, I don't work out every day. So I want people thinking I'm just this workout guru over here. Um, <laughs> you know, I work out, we try to stay in shape. We try to do something, you know, four or five days a week. And, you know, sometimes it's a, a workout. Sometimes it could just be a run. Sometimes it could just be sit-ups. Sometimes it could just be, running you know, running after day. the kids all day. <laughs> That's a workout. All that stuff adds up. So, you know, we kind of take it all uh, together and try to make sure um, physical fitness is a part of who we are so that, you know, we're around for as long as we can possibly be. So. That's a blessing. Yeah. Okay. Last question. It's a really mm -hmm. good one. They wanted to know about you guys' date night. What's your favorite one? Do you have a go-to place that you like to hang out at? Date night. I got one more, too, after this one. I actually want to read that one. That's a good one for Lee. Okay. Uh, our favorite date night spot. Mm, where do we get the date night? Where do we get it? Well, when you got three kids. Uh, I was going to say, when you, you don't get a whole lot of date day. nights. <laughs> but when we do get them, because her parents live very close to us, so her parents... I love them to death. Um, they will take our kids no matter what time of the day it is. So we have awesome help when it comes to those things. And so sometimes we'll drive to San Diego. So I'm born and raised in San Diego. Like I said, my mom still lives down there. Ooh. We'll get on the 405 freeway, drive to San Diego. We'll go golf. Um, you know, we love to golf. That's something that we do. And we walk. So that's actually kind of a workout in itself. Um, and then what else? Movies, travel? Movies. Eating. Um, we love to eat food. We love to eat. We do. We do love to eat good food. That's so, why we have to work out, because we love to eat. <laughs> uh, so a lot of the nights is just us getting, you know, getting really good food and talking. Somewhere. Being able to connect without... Without kids. Without having the kids. <laughs> Child food. All day. All day. But um, just even being in each other's presence, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything glamorous. You know, it's actually very rare that it's glamorous for us it's uh mm -hmm. it's more just being in each other's presence you know connecting quieting the noise and focusing you know having a good conversation over good food mm -hmm. over a glass of wine um it's very simple really yeah okay so bring i want, it in. We're bringing it I want to ask this question because okay good one. uh lalit how do you stay so fit after having kids Oh, okay. Um, it was, it's not easy. You know, I can't say that it just, I snapped right back into it. It was, it took a lot of time and a lot of self-acceptance because um, if I beat myself up during my journey, then I would never make it there, you know, because mm -hmm. I have to do it three times over. Um, it's very important to stay working out while pregnant you know it, it could be just a 30 minute walk it could be just body body weight things that raise your heart rate just a little bit so that you can stay to a certain level of fitness while pregnant um, and then after kids it just makes the job easier yeah um, it's not easy i have to work hard i work hard huh? Oh, he's, so I had I had um I had a really bad muscle hernia and um, mm. bad hernia. So that that was I have I would have to say one. Of we had some big ass babies. Yeah, basically. Oh, girl, I've been there. I've been there too. How big are you guys' as babies? Um, it's not easy. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of self-discipline when it comes to nutrition. You know, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I don't eat the things that I crave. I do, but I have to discipline myself not to go crazy on them. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I do a lot of um, intermediate fasting that helps, you know, not eating um, after eight and not eating too early in the morning. So it gives your um, insulin level a lot of time to drop. And that helps a lot with controlling so before, and normalizing weight. So before 12 or before 10? Bef so eight. So I don't eat from 8 p.m. to 12 um, p.m. Yeah. 12. Okay. Yeah. 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. So all yes. night. Um, so I think that time of not eating helps a lot with... Um, 
I think it's healthy. It's really healthy. Um, not easy, though. Also for, not easy. No, it's not. not easy. Especially when he's making those especially pancakes. Especially when I be making these I, pancakes I at the house. I broke that. You know, I pancakes. Don't feel very really. watery. I feel it. But, um, <laughs> it's being disciplined. It's, you know, it's but also mentally accepting where you are um, in that moment. You cannot focus so much on like the end result and mm -hmm. what you want to look like or be like. It's more of accepting your every day and just trying to win that day. You know, what can I do today better that I didn't do yesterday? Okay, For I did. Sure. Maybe I did 10 squats yesterday. Can I get to 11 squats today and win today? So just focus on whatever you can do that day to make yourself better. I And that will definitely push your, yourself and your body and your fitness to the next level yeah. before that it really doesn't matter yeah. You know what? I love that. And as a person that also gave birth to giant babies, mm -hmm. you one up me and I appreciate you yeah. because after the <laughs> second giant baby, I was done with that process. Man, listen, I had a newfound respect for women after seeing my wife go through what she went through um, with our kids. She had, they have what's called morning sickness and then she had all day sickness. Yeah. She was throwing up all day mm -hmm. and I felt so bad because I would be leaving to go to practice and she would be in the bathroom throwing up with her head stuck in the toilet. Mm. And, you know, you, you really learn a lot about, you know, for men, obviously, we don't, we don't understand. You know what I mean? We, we think yeah. we do sometimes. We all get it. But, you know, when I seen her go through, you know, some of those things, some of those all-day sicknesses and just, the, you know, some of the things that she went through with her body and that change, it really just gave me a different respect for women, women and what you guys go through, you know, to have kids. Um, it's a lot. You know, yeah. and, and, and it's not and it's not easy, you know, so you guys, you guys deserve a lot of credit. We are all in agreement there. That is for sure. <laughs> we got the easy part. You know what I'm yeah, y'all just got the fun part. Got the easy and part. Then, you know hey, what, though? Thank you, God. <laughs> thank you, God. Honestly, though, Reggie, did you get, did you get the, I know a lot of fathers struggle when they're new to parenting with the attention being shifted away from them so drastically. Did you struggle with that? Um, I don't think I struggled with that. See, for me, it was different. I struggled with, um, you know, wanting to be a great father and, mm -hmm. and striving for that because I didn't have that at home. Um, I didn't have my real dad in my life, you know, so mm -hmm. there was a big void and a big, a big gap in my life growing up that I just didn't know. You know, I didn't have a man in my life. You know, I'm not sorry. There was my stepdad, but it's different when it's your stepdad and your real dad, because I do sure. appreciate my stepdad for being there, but there's just some things that you need your real dad for, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, mm -hmm. and so for me, um, not having my real dad there affected me um, because I would go see him from time to time. He lived in LA. I would go see him, uh, but our relationship wasn't strong enough. And so there were things for me growing uh, as when we had our first, our daughter, that I had I was learning from watching her mm -hmm. and how she was with our daughter and I was I just didn't know so there was a learning curve for me you know just on how to how to be a great father and that was one of the things that was so important to me because I didn't have it and I wanted to make sure my kids had it great yeah. so look you guys I want to thank you and everybody wants to thank you for joining yeah. we still have questions but we can't find them all in this time yeah <laughs> so but i do want to thank you guys and one thing before you go i just want you guys to tell me if you remember your song your wedding song oh yeah, oh, yeah for sure we, we got married five we got married five years ago so ours is <laughs> yeah, we had georgia um that was that was our song i don't think it's not really fit for a wedding We're song joking. but we both just love it him. You just like it. Song so much. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That's Ray a Charles. Song. I just wanted to It's make not sure like a common wrong. song you play for a you know first song for a wedding, but we just love him and love the song. And yeah. Georgia is such a oh my god, such a beautiful song. Uh, from anybody out there, if you haven't heard it, Ray Charles Georgia is just it's just beautiful, man. It's, a like, it's just. Oh, we beautiful. were so mad though, because I think the band tried to cover it. Yeah, so okay. They did a cover. We were so mad dancing our first and the whole time we're talking how mad we are because oh they did a cover of the song. We wanted it just to play. We wanted Ray Charles yeah. to <laughs> sing. Right. right. It's like just plug it up to the speaker. We had a wedding Jeez. band, but the wedding band didn't know they were supposed to wait till after the first 
they yeah. had song, and they covered so they the covered song. the Georgia song. They um, sang it, and the whole time we danced, we were like, uh, <laughs> we grinned at our teeth. <laughs> like, yeah, oh. We got a smile, look happy, but we was mad as hell. <laughs> That's insane. Well, thank you guys again for joining right, Team Talk you. Live. I appreciate your time. You guys hang in there, okay? We appreciate you. Thank, thank you guys. You. No problem. Have a good night. See you guys Bye. soon. Bye.